Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay, so welcome back again. So this is uh, the, the continuous lecture. So we continue from yesterday. So what we had uh, yesterday is that uh, we are still on, so just let very, very short uh, reputation. We are still on the Reconstruction of f of x zero from f of x i of j. So what we had, so we had the Taylor expansion. So the recall again. So we had uh, have used. Taylor expansion of f x i j around x zero, so which is f of x i j is f of x zero plus x i j minus x zero f of x plus some arrow term e of x i j, where j is running from one to M, so this is let us call it 11.1 now again new new number then we have the assumption the assumption was so f of x 0 approximate f of x min and e of x i j is equal to 0 and then we had subtracted f x mean on the both side of this part so or uh, not it so therefore from 11 what we have 11.1 we have now if we use this approximation f of x i j which is f of suppose this approximate this one f of x min plus x i j minus x 0 f x plus e of x i j. So, the, our notation we have used so we define so then so one more what we had that we bring it on the left hand side so f of x i j minus f of x min is equal to x i j minus x 0 f x plus e of x i j. So, we had used a notation that so this I have defined as a b j is a f of x i j minus f of x mean and this I have defined as uh, d x a x i j minus x o and I define f x as a and e of x i j as so e of e of j is equal to I define e of x i j. So these are the notation we have used in earlier lecture. And now from here what we get, I put this symbol here, bj is equal to, this is dxj a plus efj. So this let us define, 
is the equation number 11.2. So from here, what we have got that, so from here, we have minimization, minimize the function f of a is equal to sum of wj, ej square is equal to sum of wj, ej is, if you write ej is equal to bj minus minus bxj of a whole square, yeah? And now, after minimization means what we did, del f a by del a, now it is only the function of one variable, so we can write it has no need to write the partial derivative, uh, but just write the part, doesn't matter, is equal to, we get, uh, if we minimize, we have solved the equation, as a, uh, then uh, we got finally, is equal to zero, implies we got A is equal to explicitly sum of Wj. So what we had got the sum of Wj, dxj, bj, divided by sum of wj dx j square. So we have got this relation, okay? So now we call it as 11.3. Now what we can do, we can do a little bit, uh, we can uh, do a little bit manipulation. So what we can do, uh, what we have that, uh, so if we write, so we can get also in other way, nice way, so for the computational point of view, it is not uh, necessary always to do the uh, differentiation. So from 11.2, what we can write, so I just put like earlier, ej is equal to, ej is equal to bj minus dxj of a, and now this is the vector. So here, j is equal to 1 to m, so the summation is also j is equal to 1 to m, j is equal to 1 to m, and now this is, if I write in the vector form, u1 up to em, here b1 up to b of m, minus dx1 up to dxm, so there is a, a, so this we have. So now if we write this in matrix form, so we get E is equal to B minus, so I suppose this as a matrix, so it is a column matrix M times A, and now again, the minimization from here, the FA is equal to now F of A is equal to sum of WJ EJ square equal to 1 to M. This we can write into the vector form. E transpose times the matrix W times E, where W is the, the diagonal matrix, so it has W1 up to Wm, so rest 0, and so this is the diagonal matrix with the, having a diagonal, all the weight of its neighbor are on the diagonal, yeah, this is Wm. And now we can write still, let us divide now this small part. So we can still write now f of a is equal to, this implies, we can still write e transpose is nothing else b minus minus m a transpose times w times b minus m a transpose. Yeah? And now we can do again that derivative here, del f by 
del A is equal to 0 implies del F by del A is equal to del by del A of this part B minus M A transpose times W times B minus M A transpose and now we can use the product rule. So, first we take the derivative of this part. So, derivative of B with respect to A 0 minus M is independent of A derivative with respect to A is equal to. So, this what we can write again. This I can write if I take the other way around. So, I can write M A. So, minus I take it out M A minus B transpose times W times M A minus B. And now I can write this in the same way because the minus minus is plus. So, I can write here M A minus B transpose W M A minus B. So, using the product rule, the derivative, partial derivative of this part is equal to a, oh, so is equal to del A by, so it is M, del A by del A is equal, so it is M transpose here. You use the relation that A of B transpose is equal to B transpose A transpose. If you do the matrix uh, transpose uh, relation, so this derivative of this gives M transpose times this part W times M A minus B plus. So, now the derivative of W with respect to A is 0. So, therefore, this part is gone. Now, the finally, this part M A minus B transpose times W times the partial derivative of this part with respect to A gives only M. Yeah, so this is our del F by del A. And now there is one a nice property. Since this part, since M A minus B transpose is a row vector, this implies what we can get that M A minus B transpose of W M if you do the transpose of this. So, you can get, uh, so this is equal to, if you do the transfer you get exactly M A minus B transpose W M. So, so, in this part I can write M A minus B transfer W M is equal to this one. So, here what I get here del F I del A. Now, I can write M transpose W M A minus B plus I write this part M A minus B transpose W dot M, the so whole transpose. So, this is nothing else M transpose W M A minus B plus. So, again they apply this rule. So, that if I do the transpose, uh, transpose then B transpose A transpose then what will I, I will get? because the, the transpose of diagonal matrix remains the same, it doesn't change. So, what I get that, so it comes M, M transpose first. So, W transpose is again a W times what we get that M A minus B transpose of transpose means we get nothing M A minus B. So, this is equal to, so 2 times M transpose W M A minus B. And now, since 
del f by del a is equal to 0. This implies 2 times m transpose w m a minus b is equal to 0 to cancel. And now what we get here? m transpose w m a is equal to, so I put it on right hand side, m transpose w of v. So this implies we get explicitly a is equal to m transpose w m inverse of times m transpose w of b. And now let us denote this as 11.4. So the question is, is 11 point R 11.3, 11.4 the same? Yeah? Let us check. So let us try to compute this part. So we should get a is equal to exactly that part. And now let us try to compute this part. So what is our m? You remember, our m is this column dx1 up to dxm. Our m transpose is a row dx1 up to dxm. So now we just do that m transpose wm is equal to m transpose is dx1 dxm. w is a diagonal matrix w1 up to wm. and m. So, m transpose w m is dx1 up to dxm. Now you can write this because this is a diagonal matrix. So, dx1 times dx1 dx1 is square plus dx2 times dx2 dx2 is square plus dxm times dxm dm sum is square. So, we get summation from j is equal to 1 to m, so w is everywhere, wj, then dxj square. So it's fine. So we got already wj dxj square we already got. And now the second part, m transpose wm. So m transpose w times b. So m transpose is here dx1 up to dxm. w is a diagonal matrix w1 wm 0 on other part and the b is b1 up to bm. So this is again the multiplication of row vector with the column vector. So we get wj dxj times bj bj. So m transpose wm inverse is here 1 by sum of wj dxj square j runs from 1 to m so here also j runs from 1 to m so this implies what we get exactly a is equal to now m transpose w times b is this one which is w so j of dxj bj divided by times m times wm inverse is 1 by this. So we get sum of wj dxj 
square j is equal to 1 to m j is equal to 1 to m so we got exactly same way now if you want to do always by hand the computation what you do is that you just take the matrix which is uh, dx1 up to dxm then take the transpose and then you just multiply that m transpose wm you just to take this uh, matrix multiplication and take the inverse and then you have again matrix times uh, the this is a matrix times vector multiplication this is a vector you get matrix and vector so if you have the matrix larger we will come to the next and then finally you just plug into this formula so explicitly what do we get that if it is a minimization gives you explicitly a is equal to zero now we get a solution because if this part is zero so we don't get solution we get a singularity so when it is not when it is zero if all neighbor point you put everything in xo then the difference between xo and its neighbor is zero so in that case that if all points are neighbor points are sitting at the same point we cannot have any solution so that we have to avoid so it will come later when we take the derivative so now we are just doing the interpolation which the interpolated point is not on the on the neighbor on the grid but sometimes we may get the case that when the particle move then they all will sit together and then we get some type of singularity here that we should avoid so now i think we finished the first order approximation and now let us uh, go to the second order now we have completed the first order approximation it may not be sufficient to do always the first order now second order so second order means we go Taylor expansion again the expansion of of x i j around f of x o up to second order now f of x again same as before f of x o plus x i j minus x o f of x plus half we get now x i j minus x o f x x plus e x i j so j runs from 1 to m and now again so if you want to have the higher order third order you go up to third order derivative you can go up to fourth order sometimes if you need very very accuracy then you go for the higher order but you have to pay the price that you get for example we'll see that in so before we had only one by one matrix because it was out to first order now i have the second order so we'll get two by two matrix that we'll see soon now again same assumption So f of x o approximate f of x min such that e of x i zero is somehow approximately zero. So we get it's very as a zero error. Uh, so then we get f of x i j is uh, f of x min. plus x i j minus x o is the same as you can just follow so i am doing it so that you will once you listen twice first order again second order then you are will be more familiar it may be boring for those who already know so it should be e square here half x i j minus 
x o square f x x plus p f x i j again j runs from 1 to number of neighbor so we since we know this value and we know also this value i can put it in one side so f of x i j minus f of x min is equal to x i j minus x o of f x minus uh, plus half x i j minus x o square f x x plus e of x i j j runs from 1 to m. Now again, what I do is that uh, I use the notation like in the linear case, I define bj is equal to this, this vector f of x ij minus f of x min I define dxj is equal to xij minus xo. I define first order derivative a1 is fx. Second order derivative a2 is fxx. And so ej is equal to the error e of x i j. So, this is the notation. Once I have this notation, what I get here? b of j is equal to here d of x j a 1 plus half d of x j square a 2 plus e of j. So, I get this relation here. And then again, what we have now? We have two unknowns. The one unknown is a1, and another unknown is a2. So, but we have the equation j is equal to 1 to m. So, we need at least two neighbors because we have two unknowns. But we have chosen the edge, the radius of neighbor sorting, so that we get always larger than. 2 because, for example, I have given in the beginning we choose in general 3 times delta x or we can choose even larger. Then we have at least even on the boundary 3 neighbor point. So we have always 2 unknown and 3 equations. So in the bound in the middle we have maybe 3 on the left, 3 on the right, like 6 on neighbor. So we have 2 unknown, 6 neighbors. So again we get over determined system and then we solve this over determined system by minimizing the error in the sense of Lisi square. So I stop it here, then in the, the upcoming lecture, I will start again from this part how to minimize this. And instead of now, which type of matrix we get in the second order? So just wait for the next lecture. Thank you for today.